how many options the scammers do you really have? Many. That's the point. And the thing is, this is where the origin of life scam comes in, uh, is that people don't quite count, they don't count the numbers. So if biology, as you find on Earth, is common everywhere, then there's something really weird going on that basically written in the quantum mechanics, there's some kind of, these bonds must form over these bonds and this catalyst must form over this catalyst when they're all quite equal. Mm -hmm. Life is contingent. The, the origin of life on Earth was contingent upon the chemistry available at the origin of life on Earth. So that means if we want to find other life -like, other Earth-like worlds, we look for the same kind of rocky world. We might look in the same zone as, as, as Earth, and we might expect reasonably to find biological-like stuff going on. That would be a reasonable hypothesis, but it won't be the same. It can't be. It's like saying, I, I don't believe in magic. That's why I, I'm sure. I just don't believe in magic. I believe in statistics and I can do experiments. And, and so I won't get the same, exactly the same sequence of events. I'll get something different. And so there is TikTok elsewhere in the universe, but it's not the same as our TikTok, right? That's, that's what I mean. Which that's aspect the of it is not the same? Well, I just think it, you, you, it, the, so what is TikTok? TikTok is a, is a, a social media where people upload videos, right? Of silly videos. So I guess there might be. Well, there's you know, humor, there's attention, there's yeah. uh, ability to process, there's ability for intelligent organisms to collaborate on ideas and find humor in ideas and play with those ideas, make them viral mm -hmm. memes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, humor seems to be kind of fundamental to the human experience. And I think that um, that's a really interesting question we can ask. Is humor a fundamental thing in the universe? I think maybe it will be, right? In terms of, if you think about in a game theoretic sense, humor, uh, the emergence of humor serves a, a, a role in our game engine. And so if selection is fundamental in the universe, and so is humor. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I actually don't know exactly what uh, role humor serves. Maybe it's like, a, uh, from a chemical perspective, it's a, like a catalyst for, uh, it is, I guess it's for several purposes. One is the catalyst for spreading ideas on the internet, that's modern humor. But humor is also a good way to deal with uh, the difficulty of life. <laughs> it's a kind of valve, release valve for suffering. Like throughout human history, life has been really hard and for the people that I've known in my life who've lived through some really difficult things, uh, humor is part of how they deal with that. Yeah. Because it's usually dark humor. But yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't know exactly sort of the, what what's the more mathematically general way to formulate what the hell is humor. <laughs> what, what humor <laughs> does it serve? But I, I still, we're kind of joking here, but it's uh, an, a counterintuitive idea to me to think that uh, life elsewhere in the universe is very different than life on Earth. And also, like, all of each instantiation of life is likely very different from each other. Yeah. Like, the, maybe there's a few clusters of similar like life, but. Uh, it's much more likely is what you're saying. To me, it's a kind of novel thought. I'm not sure what to do with it. But you're saying that there's a, it's more common to be a weird outcast in the full spectrum of life than it is to be in some usual cluster. So every instantiation of a kind of chemistry that results in complexity that's autonomous and self-replicating, however the hell you define life, that is going to be very different every time. I don't know. I. It feels like if selection is a fundamental kind of directed force in the universe, won't selection result in a in a few pockets of interesting complexities? I mean, it, yeah. I, if we ran Earth over again, over and over and over, you're saying it's going to come up with, there's not gonna be elephants every time? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think, uh, and I think that there will be similarities, and I think we know we don't know enough about how selection is um, globally works. Um, but it might be might be that the the elephant, um, the emergence of elephants, was wired into the history of Earth in some way, like the gravitational force, how evolution was going, but, you know, Cambrian explosions, blah blah blah, the emergence of mammals. But I I just don't know enough about con the contingency, right, the variability. All I do know. If you count the number of bits of information required to make an element, uh, sorry, an elephant, and 
and um, think about the causal chain that provide the, the lineage of ele elephants going all the way back to Luca, there's a huge scope for divergence. Yeah, but just like you said, with chemistry and selection, the the things that result in self-replicating chemistry and self-replicating organisms, uh, those are extremely unlikely, as you're saying, uh, but once they're successful, they multiply. So like, I, I just, it, it might be a tiny subset of all, of all things that are possible in the universe, chemically speaking, it might be a very tiny subset is actually successful at creating elephants or, or uh, elephant-like uh, or slash human-like creatures. Well, there's two different questions. Here. The first one, if we were to reset Earth and to start again. At would... the different phases, sorry to keep interrupting. Yeah, no, if we restart Earth and start again, say we could go back, back to the beginning and do the experiment or have a number of Earths, um, how similar would biology be? I would say that there would be, there would be broad similarities but um, but the emergence of mammals is not a given unless we're going to you know throw an asteroid at each planet each time and, and go, try and and try and faithfully reproduce what happened. Then there's the other the other thing about when you go to another Earth-like planet elsewhere, maybe there's a different ratio, particular elements. Maybe there's uh, the bomb the bombardment at the beginning of the planet was quicker or longer than Earth, and and I just don't have enough information there. What I do know is that. Um, the the complexity of the story of life on Earth gives us lots of scope for variation, and I just don't think it's a reasonable mathematical assumption to think that they will, that, that that life on Earth that happened again would be the same as what we have now.